Hello everybody, welcome back to the landscape and a different day today. Different because of the camera that I'm deciding to use for today's little outing. The boat has just gone past and all the ripples have just hit the shore. So for those of you that's uh, followed the channel for a little while, you will <coughs> remember, excuse me, that I've been quietly collecting Olympus OM film cameras. My very first serious camera was an Olympus OM camera. It was Olympus OM 10. And I've quietly been pulling examples of uh, the other models off eBay. There were 16 in total. Uh, I've got eight working examples uh, of uh, those cameras. And this one today, mounted on the tripod, this is the Olympus OM30, uh, which is uh, one of the later models. Uh, the OM40 was the later one in the, uh, this uh, range, the uh, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40. Um, so this is sort of towards the, uh, towards the end. The unique feature with this camera is it's got, um, it's not got autofocus, but it's got a, an ability to detect whether the uh, item in the center of the viewfinder is in focus or not. When this lens, when this, uh, sorry, camera was uh, released, it was released with uh, or uh, shortly to be coming, uh, autofocus lens. And I'm going to show you the autofocus lens because it's really, it's quite bizarre. Um, but um, let me just take this camera off. So there is the camera on the tripod and you can quite clearly see the lens with this rather large unit underneath it. And there's the other side. You can quite clearly see the on off switch. Uh, just to prove to you that it does work, let me just, where's the shutter button on the camera? It's just being uh, a little bit uh, slow. You can see it there turning back and forth. There we go. Right, cool. So that is working. Whew, thank heavens for that. Now, what the camera is looking at is going to be a challenge, but let's see if we can. Put the Osmo in there so you can see what's in the viewfinder. Like so. I have just been moving the camera around. So let's just do that. Uh, I want to bring it down a little bit. Those rocks to have a bit of separation. I will check this before I take the frame. There we go. And hopefully, I'm hoping that you can see on the left-hand side of the viewfinder is a little display with a shutter speed. And for this camera, it's got some metering built in and that is the predicted shutter speed that this uh, camera is saying based on the scene in front of it that it actually needs to use, which is cool. The lens uses the center point of the viewfinder to actually find something to focus on. If there isn't anything there, like just the surface of the water, it's got nothing to actually determine what to focus on. I've just moved it onto the legs of that little jetty and now focus is smack on. Um, so I'm gonna to have to adapt. Um, the problem I was going to talk to you about was the fact that when you put filters on the front, of course, it's the whole thing that rotates. So, so if you make an adjustment and then hit autofocus and it decides it wants to, you know, adjust position, you are got to move it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the jetty or the, um, yeah, the, the thing coming out into the water, whatever it is, like so, right? And I'm going to switch the lens autofocus off. I'm going to release the filter, put it straight, and then I'm going to recompose. OK. 
kind of like how you saw in the viewfinder. Yeah. And now when I look at the focus indication in the viewfinder, it's bouncing back and forth. The camera is really struggling to decide what to do. So we are at, we're going to be at, uh, where are we? Where's F8 gone? Yep, there we are. We're at F8. Right, so I've let the lens focus, repositioned and, and reframed, sorted out the grad. I'm at F8. Uh, <laughs> the camera is predicting a quarter of a second. I really should have brought my cable release, but here we go. Frame number one. Quarter of a second. I love that sound, by the way. Wind him on. Frame two. I'm going to recompose and I'm going to go through exactly the same process again. Um, I've got the camera quite high up because I was trying to get the posts from the jetty not interfering with the land. The problem is they're so damn tall, that's never going to be the case. So I'm just going to accept that they're going to go into the land and um, yeah, just try and find a slightly different view. So let me do that now. So this is a different day and a different location. Unfortunately, I had to cut that video short um, at that particular point in time. I had a group of uh, freshwater swimmers uh, that arrived and decided to get changed uh, alongside me and then they went for a swim. Uh, and then there was a wedding photographer that turned up with a couple of flash guns and was taking pictures of presumably the bride and groom or uh, maybe the uh, fiancé and fiancette or whatever it is <clears throat> um, on the uh, actual jetty itself. So that was it. I, you know, they have just as much right to be there as I did. And I just thought, look, I, I can't do this anymore. So another day and a different location. But I'm still looking for uh, subjects that would suit black and white film. Now, I can't remember where I got to. Uh, so let me just recap very quickly. So this is an autofocus lens that's 40 years old. As I discovered last night, in fact, I've left the damn thing on all night. <clears throat> Let's hope it's shut itself down. Uh, as I discovered uh, last night, uh, I need to have an object or something for the autofocus to lock onto in the middle of the frame. When I composed the pier and the lake and the little rocks, all I had in the center of the frame was uh, shimmering water, which this lens uh, was struggling to focus on. So what I actually had to do was point the lens at something uh, with some contrast and some lines. The autofocus locked onto that and then switch the lens off, recompose and away I go. And as long as I don't touch the uh, focus ring, then I'm good. There's one other thing that I encountered, which was I use rectangular filters, as most of you know. The front of the lens rotates along with the focus. So I was having to autofocus, <laughs> recompose the camera, change the position of the filter, hope to heavens I don't move the uh, focus ring, and then uh, take the image. Now, in truth, I'm using apertures of f8, f11, so if the focus has shifted ever so slightly in me doing that, I doubt very much it's going to make uh, a huge amount of difference, but it was something that I had to contend with out there uh, in the landscape. So let's have a look at this subject here behind me and I'll just talk through um, uh, photographing that one with this 40 year old camera and 40 year old lens. Okay, so to mount the camera, I have got an L bracket on it. As you can see here, I've got the L bracket actually on the, uh, the lens. It's got a large bulky uh, battery compartment, and presumably some of the electronics are in there as well. Uh, to mount it on the camera, it, I could mount it, but then it would foul the, fil uh, the film door. So I elected to mount it on the lens. We'll just slot that on like you do. 
Oh no, other way. There we go. Sign it up. Unfortunately, because I wear glasses, oh, mind you, I don't have to worry so much about that, do I? I just need to get the composition right. And it's just like using a conventional camera, to be honest with you. I'm being careful with the edges of the frame, making sure I remove the sky. I forgot to bring my spirit level with me. So I'm just going to use the tripod level on the head. I think that's okay. Blimey, that didn't take me very long, did it? But that's okay, that's fine. So I'm just going to move you to look through the viewfinder. There we are. I'll just try and remove some of the glare. So hopefully you can see there I'm being as careful with my composition as I would normally be. The image is more about shape and texture than colour. The shapes and textures of the tree. There's a scale on the left hand side where the camera is telling me the shutter speed that it thinks is suitable. Yeah. And also the autofocus is just locked straight onto the scene. I didn't have the same problem that I had yesterday on the lake. It's just, it's just done it, which is superb. So let's take the image. Right, I actually found the self timer. It's a wee button up here, which will make up for the fact that I've not got my cable release with me. So you can hear the tone. That's the lens saying, I'm focused. Thank you very much indeed. Right, self timer. And I know the self timer's running because there's a little flashing red light on the front. Hopefully. <laughs> now, why is that not taking the image? Ah, there we go. Now we're focused. I now got that flashing red light. I have absolutely no idea. I can't see in the daylight. Let's see what happens. So, you know, when you think <laughs> you've made a silly error and wound the blinking film on. Right, let's try that again. Autofocus. Self timer. Click, click. And of course, I can't review the image until I've had the film developed. But 40 year old camera, 40 year old lens, still in working condition. I'm well impressed. And what I need to look for now is some more black and white subjects and get the film used up so that I can have it developed. But yeah, what a lovely piece of kit. So I'm going to wrap this video up here. As you can see, I'm still getting to grips with 1980s film technology. But you know what? I make a mistake. I smile to myself. Oh, what the hell? Carry on. To some extent, that is the joy of using film, is making these silly mistakes, giving you a kick and carrying on. What I love about film is I have no idea whether that image has come out or not. And it's probably going to be quite a few weeks before I find out. That anticipation, I love that anticipation. Of course, I'll be crushingly disappointed if it's absolutely crap and it doesn't come out. But again, that's part and parcel of film. I'll um, try, uh, try again another day, another time. So I'm going to leave uh, this one here. I hope it's been entertaining and fun. It's certainly been entertaining and fun uh, for me, and I do apologize uh, that it was actually in two hits. But again, that was a situation that I couldn't control. If you're tempted by film, go and give it a go. It can be done relatively cheaply. You have to be careful with what cameras you buy and what lenses and so on and so forth. I was just trying to think how much, I think the camera was about a hundred pounds, the lens 40 or 50 pounds, something like that. 
And of course, you can buy cheaper. You don't have to splash out 150 pounds on a 40 year old piece of technology, but I did because I've been trying to collect uh, these cameras. Uh, if you're into landscape photography, not just film photography, then please do consider becoming a subscriber. Uh, hit the subscribe button. And then if you hit the bell icon alongside, you'll get notified of new content. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Give it a like on YouTube. Helps my channel and it helps get the content out there. So until we're out in the landscape one more time, be it digital or film, uh, please stay well, stay safe and take care of each other. Bye for now. There's another group of trees over there. I'm going to go and have a go at those. If it works. I'll stick it on the end. Mm.